Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to the house of the Lord. What a splendid day to worship Jesus Christ, and we are the worshiping family of God today. It doesn't matter who you are, how you got here, whether you were new, old, in between, whatever motivated you to enter the sanctuary today, it was of God, and Jesus has a purpose for you and a plan for your life. You matter to God and to us. And we also extend a greeting to those who are watching through drive up or virtually. You are part of who we are today. And the Lord is pleased on this Epiphany Sunday. You're thinking. <laughs> He used one of those 79 cent words again. Okay, what in the world is epiphany? There are secular definitions used in regular conversation. However, the Christian definition of epiphany, it is those times and situations when the presence of God in Jesus Christ was visible and obvious, and the early church pointed to two in particular. Number one was the baptism of Jesus by John in the Jordan. And you remember, as the banner says, the voice from the heavens saying, This is my beloved. That was one epiphany to the early church. What was the second? They pointed to the Magi coming from afar. For surely that meant that the presence of God in Jesus Christ was even obvious to those who had ears to hear, those who had eyes to see, even if they were in a far off land. So that is Epiphany Sunday. We will celebrate with Holy Communion. Who is allowed to take communion at Lafayette Presbyterian Church? Well, you have to have one of these tokens that you earn by your, no, not really. Uh, if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are welcome at the table. And that includes children with the permission of their parents. This is the Lord's table, and we will be more than pleased to share it with God's children. Now, I have a confession to make. I have joked for years about an elder way back when I was first starting out in the ministry who proudly made communion bread for the people and brought it with a big smile. She was so happy. And the other ladies just about lost it. She had baked orange raisin cinnamon bread for communion. <laughs> and the pastor stepped in and said, well, the truth be told, we don't know what kind of bread Jesus ate in the upper room. You know, it's the women that prepared it for them, and maybe they wanted to make something special. Who knows? Well, I've joked about this for years. Thursday, when I was baking the communion bread, which includes the bread that you will receive, I intended to make a loaf for dinner, which had, it was Dakota bread with nuts and seeds and raisins. And I intended not to mix them in the bread that was made for communion, but I was in such a hurry I forgot. So the communion bread today, you can tell all your friends for years, you had communion bread that had uh, nuts and seeds and raisins in it. 
Now, if you are someone who is either gluten-free or cannot have nuts and seeds, there will be gluten-free crackers on each tray that the elders can hand you instead. I apologize, but it will be kind of fun. So, anyway. In the bulletin today, when you read about the flower donation, you will see that my computer skills know no limits. I inadvertently deleted the wrong line, and uh, so the flowers are given by Carol Wade in honor of her husband Tom, whose birthday would have been this month. Today we will install elders and deacons. I want to give you advance notice because when I say it right at the end, sometimes people are a little shy. I will be calling forward anyone who has been ordained an elder or a deacon in the Presbyterian Church or any denomination with which we have communion, which is many, uh, and pastors, ministers of word and sacrament, I will be inviting you to come forward and participate in the liturgy. So don't be bashful, even if you have only ever been in a church miles away from here, we are one family. If you've ever been ordained an elder or deacon, you will be invited forward to participate in the sacrament. Two more. Oh, this is a long one today. Uh, at 3 o'clock today, I hope many of you come back. Why? We're going to have a showing of Magoo's Christmas Carol, one of the finest adaptations of the novel. And there will be snacks, desserts, and I'm going to be making my from scratch pizza hot and fresh. And then on Wednesday at 11.30, Susie and I are hosting our first meet and eat in a couple of years. Uh, it will be 11.30 Wednesday at Game Street Pies. Uh, it would be helpful if you told me if you were coming, but you don't need to. You can just show up if you want. And we'll have three meet and eats this month at different restaurants. You can attend one, two, or all three. Uh, please, this is our... I'm sorry. This is our attempt to try to be able to break bread with as many of you as possible before our retirement. And we just love you all so much. If, if you can make any of these this month, starting with this Wednesday at 1130, please, we would love to host you. Let us continue the worship. Oh no, we have joys and concerns today. Uh, if you have a joy or a concern, please text it to me. My number is in your bulletin, and I will start with some of the uh, prayer concerns that have already been texted. Uh, we usually do them later in worship, but because of communion, let's share them now. Uh, okay, first, pray for Randy Burns, family member Don, who has health concerns. And... Uh, Marlene Winnell has a joy. Our church gave over $1,200 to the Presbyterian Giving Catalog in the form of eight families of chickens, five educated child, four piglets, four farming tools, two sewing machines, two kitchen kits, two fishing nets, two jerry cans, two garden wells, one woman's empowerment, one pair of goats, and one teacher trained. My. And also, please pray for Linda Blunt and her family, our secretary Linda. Uh, her uncle Johnny Matthews passed this week. We have no service details at this time. Twyla Phillips needs our prayers. Uh, she had a terrible fall and broke her neck. Uh, she was hospitalized and now she is at Center Point. And on top of that, Jerry and Kay can't go visit her because Jerry tested positive for COVID. So pray for all of them. 
Pray for Molly Miller. She had a fall Thursday. She says she's okay. She says she's okay. She only has a shiner, some sprains, and a few stitches. Well, <laughs> uh, I hope none of us gets to be that okay this week, but uh, prayers for her. Let me see if there are any others. Uh, uh, Faith Dickman, a joy. John Kinnear is, uh, I did it again, didn't I, Faith? <laughs> My phone says Faith Dickman because I am too lazy to have updated it from <laughs> five years ago. Faith Kinnear has a joy. John is back to work and enjoying himself. Well, let us continue the worship of Almighty God. have a joy to share. Um, we have the Fry family visiting with us and our friend Scott Clements and Matthew's back with us, so that's a great joy. Oh, forgot to share that joy, sorry. And now let us continue with our intro.
Let us offer to God our confession and prayer. The Magi brought you gifts, O Christ, to proclaim your majesty. Yet you chose to embrace our frailty, that we might receive salvation. We ask your forgiveness when we fail to recognize the death of your church. And so, five of these questions we have already asked them in the presence and witness of other elders and deacons. And you have all of the questions in your insert if you're interested in knowing what it is they have agreed to. And now we will, during this service, answer the remaining questions. And so, Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Amen. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? Now, for those being installed as elders, will you be faithful ruling elders watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And for those being installed as deacons, will you be faithful deacons, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And now I would invite my son Chris to come forward with me. And Chris, if you could read the questions for the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept these as elders and deacons, <clears throat> chosen by God through the voice of this congregation, to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please raise your hand. 
Do we agree to encourage them to respect their decisions and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? If so, please raise your hand. And now I would invite first, if you were installed as an elder or a deacon in this church in the last two years, please come and stand with these. The reason for this, we never had the chance to do the laying on of hands the last couple of years. So if you have been installed in the last couple of years and didn't have a laying on of hands, please come and stand here with these. And if you're not sure, just come forward because you're all going to be coming forward pretty quickly anyway. Okay, and now in this group, we're going to, we are still a little COVID respectful, so we're not going to try to crowd too much. But in a moment, I'll be asking you to put your hands on each other's shoulders. Now, anyone present who has been installed, an elder, a deacon, or a pastor in any denomination that has communion with us, please come forward also and turn and face these and place your hands on a shoulder. Even if this is your first time at Lafayette, if you've been previously ordained or installed, please choose someone, put a hand on their shoulder. If you can't get to them, then we can do sort of like a daisy chain from shoulder to shoulder as we go back. on a shoulder anywhere. I would like to offer the prayer of installation. Let us bow our heads. Lord, as we feel today a part of that great cloud of witnesses, Fill us with your Holy Spirit, and Lord, especially those being installed today, or those who have been previously installed. Lord, for those who are serving forward as active elders and deacons, please, Lord, commission them with all your love and fill them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, those of us who have previously been ordained, we pray that you would in our hearts renew the vows that we have taken. Remind us of the joy of service and bless us with the knowledge that yes, we are called to be your hands and feet. I thank you for good and faithful servants who step up to be counted. But remember, as we participate in this service, that you have told us the greatest of all will be the servant of all. Those who are lifted up will be brought down, and those who are lowly will be lifted up. So may we have that lowly heart, that humble heart, that meekness of which you spoke in the Beatitudes, that we would answer the call humbly and with a determination to follow your will and your way. We thank you and we praise you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now, to those who were installed today, I extend the right hand of Christian fellowship. You are now ordained and installed as elders and deacons at Lafayette Presbyterian Church, and in the Church of Jesus Christ. In all that you do, do it in the name of Jesus Christ, showing forth his love and mercy always. And now it is appropriate for handshakes, hugs, 
or whatever you feel comfortable with, all of us to rejoice in the call of Jesus Christ.
be the kingdom will be restored. And now, reading of Jesus, oh yes, a Messiah that will come through the waters together with us. Oh, this is our deepest and most blessed hope. So the readers and hearers in the first century would have immediately seen Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, leading him through the waters for the restoration of the kingdom. I've been through waters, perhaps you have as well, both physical and symbolically. I remember I took some of my youth group young people to the caverns at Camoy in Puerto Rico. And we were led way down into the deepest recesses. And there was one place where we had to float on our stomachs through a narrow tunnel. There was only about six inches of space above us. Some of the kids made it through okay. I barely made it through. <laughs> and the guy just casually said, let's hope it didn't rain this morning anywhere nearby. Because if the cavern fills up, we're doomed. Oh, thank you. You wait till they're all through and I'm ready to go. But you know, uh, the people in San Francisco and the surrounding area have seen what the floodwaters can do. And we also have suffered in our lives from waters of chaos, from mortgages that are underwater, trying to keep our heads above water, thirsting for peace, for stability. First century Christians would have understood Jesus to represent the fulfillment of all prophecy and all of God's promises. They would have had hearts bursting with hope that these were now living waters to refresh, to quench their thirst and their yearnings, waters to restore, waters to clean and purify. We're usually searching for ways around deep waters, just as a child clings to the side wall of a pool, afraid to enter the deeper waters. We try to avoid the trials of our lives, only to have them move directly in front of us all over again. But we must trust as they would have so many years ago hearing this good news. We must trust that God is leading us. Sometimes God is heading us off at the pass. Sometimes God is pushing us toward the challenges and the difficulties and the trials of life but always leading us through them. Through the waters, you will never be forsaken or forgotten. You will never be left desolate. It's tempting to think, I can't take much more of this. If I go through any much more in my life, they're going to have to write another version of Job for the Bible. I've been treading water for so long, and I'm just tired and afraid I'm going to sink. But Jesus will lead you through these waters. Hear this. Whatever you're facing, you will get through it. You will not drown or be swept away. And the people of God reflecting, perhaps imperfectly, but nonetheless reflecting the light of the love of Jesus Christ. We are there for each other. Sometimes we fall short. <clears throat> but 
but don't hesitate to share what you need with the people around you. I promise you in this congregation, this family, if you ever find someone who will fail to respond, there will be 10 ready to jump into their place and walk with you in the name of Jesus. Yes, the waters can feel deep and chaotic, but we will find our consolation and our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, life will threaten to break us, separate us, flood us. The living waters of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice in body and blood, restores us and brings us back, quenches us, rescues us, and redeems us. His promise echoes through history and throughout our lives. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you at this moment of communion that you are there, living water to lead us through, and your promises offered through the echoes of Isaiah's prophecy, renewed in the new covenant of Jesus Christ, are sure and certain through the waters you will be with us. In Jesus' name. Now, when we serve communion to you, please partake as the Spirit moves you. We will not be holding the elements in common. Also, the elders will serve you. They will be gloved, and so they will hand you the elements. Now, if you are someone that needs or desires the gluten-free, seed-free, nut-free, fruit-free bread. <laughs> Never thought I would ever say that in the pulpit. When they are ready to serve you, give them a thumbs up and they will know to give you the uh, gluten-free bread. This is the table of the Lord. Our Savior, our Master, Jesus Christ, invites all to the table of the Lord. All who are weary and heavy laden, but also those who are filled with joy. Those who grieve, those who rejoice. All are invited to come, share in the feast which he has prepared. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would bless these elements, the bread and the cup, that they would be for us a means of grace. In other words, that by sharing, partaking, and being part of this community of faith today, we would feel the presence of your Spirit, that we would hear once again your call, your claim in our lives. Lord, bless us and help us to feel the true epiphany of this day. Oh yes, that you 
are visible and obviously present in Jesus Christ our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And in a like manner he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we do now. Come forth with the bread, the body of Christ, the bread of life. We share one another with one another the sustenance that is offered both physically and spiritually as we commune together. The body of Christ broken for you. blood of Christ, shed for the many for the remission of sin. The blood of Christ, which is for us living water. And we rejoice as we pass through the waters, symbolically in Christ's baptism, through our baptism, 
and in the partaking of communion today. Feel the presence of the Spirit amongst us as we distribute and share one with another the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink of it, all of you. Deliver us from evil, for thine 
and his kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now before I return to the pulpit and invite us to share the hymn of parting, you should have all received a little card today with a star on it, and those stars should have words. Now, if you did not receive a little star word card, raise your hand and the ushers will make sure you get one. They're coming around now. And uh, just draw one randomly if you want to reach in deeply, you can. If you want to take one off the top, you may. Now, the rules are as such. <laughs> you cannot swap with someone else. <laughs> and if you drew two by mistake, you are bound by both. <laughs> now, what are star words? We don't consider them to be magic. But we do love the feeling of knowing that God calls us in many ways, and we hope and pray that your star word will represent something that God has in store for you this year, perhaps something God is inviting you to be a part of, Perhaps you're being challenged. Maybe you're being comforted or inspired. But we ask you to take these words and place them somewhere where you'll see them regularly. Let them resonate in your heart. Meditate over them and see where the Lord is leading you. Susie, I'm supposed to be retiring at the end of the month, but my star word was service. So, uh, Mine was time. <laughs> well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> but let us pray over our star words. Lord, even as the Magi followed the star, May we be reminded by the symbol of the star, yes, of the birth of the Christ child, the birth of hope, but also, Lord, may there be a new birth in our lives, and may one of the guiding words for this coming year be our star word as we meditate upon your love, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In body or in spirit, please stand with me for our hymn of parting, Breathe on Me, Breath of God.
to join Susie and I at 3 o'clock today for a wonderful viewing of Magoo's Christmas Carol. And I charge us as we move through the waters, remember the promise of our God, voiced by Isaiah, confirmed in Jesus Christ. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever.